first question, have you read all these books? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, I mean, I, I, uh, I've, read, I've read over the half of them over the years, uh, but others I couldn't read either because I didn't like them. So, or because, um, uh, because basically, uh, due to lack of time, certain certain things are extremely big works. So I just read reviews and uh, commentary on them. Because essentially, my function with this guide was to create a mini encyclopedia rather than to read and analyze. I'm not a literary critic. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a biologist and writer and a reader. <laughs> so, so, yeah. But uh, I, I made a good list while while I've been doing research. So hopefully, in the future, we'll read them all. <laughs> Well, my question is, what titles or authors have influenced you as a writer? You have published yourself uh, three fiction titles. Yeah. So what, what was the influence behind them? I th well, I'm mostly influenced uh, by uh, a lot of international authors because I write in English, so obviously I influence a lot uh, by English literature. But from Russian authors, obviously, uh, uh, writers who inspire me, uh, Viktor Pilevin, I admire him. Although this is not, um, an, it doesn't maybe write very artistic prose, but he's uh, uh, the ocean of information and how he basically combines so many different ideas. So I think he's the major influence for me. Um, I wonder if you feel that, say, you know, Russian ownership, I gather, of, of Waterstone's bookshop and they have a Russian store in London. Uh, I just wonder if, if you think that that's actually increased access to you know, Russian books with the, with the sort of UK audience, um, and just your your view, I suppose, slightly separate issue to, to do with you know adaptations, maybe films and that that sort of thing, and um, you know how how do you feel about that sort of increase in the accessibility, um, whether there are you know quite a lot of adaptations in terms of film and TV, and, and whether um, you know uh, say through Waterstones and a Russian bookshop in London. If, if you think that that's increased access, say, to, to, to the UK market? I think they, I mean, they definitely increased access to UK market. I mean, only 1% of UK market is actually foreign titles. It's a very small segment. But Russian books are very well pre present in it. And, uh, um, and, and obviously because of these recent festivals and, um, recent festivals and uh, Academia Rosic events uh, um, and, uh, and Russia was a featured as a country, um, um, like a focus country in the two years ago in the London Book Fair. So I think all these uh, things there raised awareness as well. But I don't think it's enough done f in terms of book adaptation. We have a lot of good films there. Um, they produced, and all all is needs is is basically all is needed to create subtitles of them or actually create a central resources that people can access them. There, there, there are all of them there. It's just. I think it needs to be a central effort to put them all together. Mm -hmm. And for instance, um, this thing Sadan, um, um, Stephen Fry, he um, helped to uh, make a film for BBC about new Russian authors. Um, but not that many people actually have seen it. And uh, for instance, he did the, he narrated Eugene Onegin, um, no uh, poem by uh, Alexander Pushkin. And it will, it's available for free online, but not many people again downloaded it. It's, I think it needs to be a bit more effort in terms of uh, um, kind of um, uh, popularizing these things. Yeah, but then, then you know, it's uh, every every Ministry of Culture, they uh, basically, it's up to them to do that. Yeah. Do you think it's a particular genre um, that sort of crosses really well to, 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 to a sort of, you yeah. know, outside? Defin de de it's definitely extremely green political fiction or yeah. science fiction. Okay. These two genres, they are <laughs> super well represented. Yeah. What do you think about recent lectures by uh, Bekov about Russian literature? I have. Uh, which one you mentioned? I, I've been. I've been. Uh, I haven't been to recent ones. Um, well, so. there are a few on the Russian channel. Dost. Uh, I haven't yeah. seen them, yeah. so I, yeah. I can't comment. I, I've seen his uh, lectures about two years ago on uh, several I, writers. I can, I, I can tell more probably about it, or I can uh, 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 tell my opinion. It's it's kind of pop literature what he is doing. Uh, uh, it's kind of popular. Uh, that's why uh, he is so popular. It's uh, most of the people in his audience haven't read the books he is speaking about at all. Uh, I, I've been to his uh, recent lectures in London. 
uh, he's asking, sometimes he tried to ask questions uh, for the audience not to fall completely asleep, and nobody except of me could answer these questions, though it, they were trivial questions about Bulgakov's master and Margarita. Mm -hmm. Margarita, if you read once this book, you, you know everything. And he asked questions, uh, they even couldn't answer them. It's some kind of a new audience. It's people coming to London, know nothing, uh, or uh, some of them are professionals uh, gr who grow up in England somehow. It's children whom we brought, probably this generation of our children. It's their first touch to Russian literature. And it's probably very important because he at least intro it's he's doing what 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 we have, what we have here now more or less he's introducing but he is introducing to them classical Russian literature uh, which they don't know out of this or out of that reason to the people who are what he does here in England at least. It's for the people who, who read some Russian book. It's it's not uh, uh, some Russian books. It's not very interesting. He's speaking about Chekhov, about Bulgakov, so on and so forth. What he does in Russia in Primaya Rage is different. Uh, there, it's uh, it's it's a lot of very interesting uh, issues at least. But the way he does it is uh, it, it is short and popular, to do it short and popular and easy going and, and, and with a lot of wit. So it's it's nice and you have a feeling you learn something, but in fact you, you learned uh, very few and you must go go on and go on and go on. It's just a short introduction. What what I uh, it for me it's just a short introduction. I, I never had an opportunity to learn from his lectures something very deep, but it's my, my personal opinion. Sometimes it's, uh, but but sometimes it's a lot of fun. Mostly it's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, so this year, even before uh, Svetlana Alexievich got her Nobel uh, Literature Prize, there was a lot of online debate about why Russian authors haven't got a Nobel Literature Prize for 25 or 30 years. And the kind of the dominant consensus uh, was that the Russian literature is mostly inward looking and it's not, doesn't have enough universal appeal. So would you agree to this? Well, as I, as I already presented my argument, I disagree. I think there are a lot of authors who are kind of looking at things uh, not just from a Russian perspective, but also like uh, quite wide. I mean, um, Maxim Kander is, is uh, one of the writers who actually write about the whole European civilization. It's just not Russia. So it's, uh, there are a lot of writers who write in broader, but just I think I think um, in the past 20 years, um, all the modern voices have been overshadowed by the Soviet period rights. They just flooded into the scene and people haven't heard about them. Maybe they heard of Bulgakov, but not all the others. So this tsunami is not actually gone. And now people are learning about authors who actually been active in the 90s. And, and by now they produce like 20 novels and people haven't heard of them. So I think it's, we are still only starting to discover uh, new people. So. And that's why maybe um, Nobel Committee, maybe they are confused because uh, um, maybe they have only have uh, limited selection, mm -hmm. and uh, it would it would take some uh, then some some time to to pick uh, the future winner. But in war in wordness, it's it's actually the issue with any national literature. Yet um, this hasn't been an impediment. In fact, this this was the reason why. Um, like Mo Yang got the um, Nobel Prize like a couple of years ago for, for portraying Chinese society. So I don't think that's a problem actually. So. May I disagree with you? Uh, I think <laughs> Svetlana Alexievich is absolutely great. She's absolutely great, great, great. It's it's probably not a literature how we used to have it. It's documentary. It's it's big kind of journalism, but it's a great, I, I, I read again all the five books now when she won, and it's, it's crazy because her last book is not yet translated, the first translation is coming at the end of, of uh, May uh, by a very little marginal uh, uh, publishing house, it's the first English translated, uh, translation, it's translated in all possible languages, but not in English, it's the first English translation coming in May, and I, I do my best, I do a help to invite Svetlana Alexievich in May to us, uh, to our club, and, and to have simultaneously with it uh, also uh, other uh, uh, Belarusian literature and Belarusian film, 
uh, or the uh, uh, adaptation of Belarusian books, uh, which is also uh, known to uh, to nobody, but her books are indeed great. And and uh, it's 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 specific Russian because he had only a, an opportunity to uh, to go through Russia and to interview people in Russian, and it's also a specific Russian subject. But what she writes about 90s in her last book. It's great, and it's. Uh, I think it's the only true view of '90s how I see them, at least. So I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a great. No, I agree with you that uh, I mean it's a fully deserved Nobel Prize, but that's again that's considered to be a Belarusian Nobel Prize, and, oh, and no. uh, anyway, anyway, uh, there is a whole new Belarusian literature as out there. Vladislav the publication they publish Belarusian literature, Ukrainian literature. You can learn. I mean, they have really they're the best publisher really because they on the website they have everything stratified, it's very easy, with all the reviews and uh, short exits, so you can you can see everything. They have also some videos of interviews with writers, so, um, yeah, I mean, they've been doing it, so it's not a, in a way, uh, she was the voice of, uh, like, you know, of Belarus, not Russia. I mean, she's been writing about Russia, but that's considered to be Belarusian price again, mm -hmm. so, so I don't know. And I don't disagree with you on, on this at all, no, I, I, I think it's, it's a gold uh, uh, Nobel Prize, <laughs> oh, she, uh, indeed. No, it's fine. I, I, yeah, I don't argue with you at all uh, mm -hmm. about it. But I think there's a lot. Uh, it's again. Are we, are we, are we talking about journalism or literature? That's quite different because, mm. in a way. But then you can argue on um, um, the the Gulag Archipelago also was a <laughs> work of journalism in a way exactly. because it's not, it's not, it's a documentary narrative. So, yeah. Can you argue what Nobel politics goes from political uh, perspective rather than purely literally value? Yeah, I mean, I think the one problem with the Nobel Prize is it's persistent in, in terms of awarding Russian authors who portray Russia negatively. Yeah. Not negatively, but basically exploring all the problems. Because maybe it's, um, it's not, it's not um, the function of literature to write about positive things. It's actually, it's all about problems, because conflict, that's, that's what drives uh, literature in a way. So uh, that's understandable. Especially Russian literature. Yeah. Well, I kind of got a feeling that what you said, you mentioned sort of, you know, ISIS and, and it's the rather controversial part of your, your speech. And I just wondered, that, as far as Russia was concerned, yeah. if you felt that the sort of quality of the literature was kind of really important in, in sort of, you know, determining how a state may, you know, may be developed or, or may, um, I mean, how, how do you feel about, about that in terms of, you know, creating a new, new state as, you know, we may we may see in the future in, well, in certain parts. Do you think quality is, is, is a real issue, given, given the fact that what we've seen so far is sort of rather crude kind of narratives? Do, do you think that sort of literature can really um, contribute? I mean, you, you mean the yeah, writers who write in a rather crude way and writers who are quite sophisticated. I mean, we have yeah, more standard yeah. writers, for instance. I think because there are writers who are focused on language, other writers are focused on the content and ideas. And, uh, and other writers are uh, focused on plots. And uh, very rarely, actually, you have writers, uh, all three things combined in one book. Uh, for instance, Tatiana Tolstaya, she's great with language, but uh, she's not that much into, actually, um, yeah. political th discussions or plot. So that's why she's, she's only written one novel and then everything else is short stories. So she's good with language, but not with other things. And with Akunin, for instance, he's a master of plot, um, uh, but um, uh, he, he, he can't do the, all the heavyweight things. I mean, he's written uh, <laughs> things like uh, Aristonomia, but uh, they didn't take off very well. So I think everybody has their own niche. In, they should in, probably unite. Yeah, I mean, in terms of Russian literature, actually, um, influences a lot Russian politics. In fact, a lot of people who are close to Kremlin, like um, Prahanov, uh, over the years, they created actually a body of work kind of supporting Kremlin ideology as well and defining roots and some of the even like ex-ministers, people who were close to Putin, uh, they actually wrote books. Um, um, so, um, so I think uh, people who there, they read and um, I think um, it, it does influence the process, but I think I don't think it's about quality of writing. I think about it, it's about quality of ideas, and it's dangerous when when people are not very intellectual and yet they try to develop certain ideas without actually putting everything into consideration, and then it influences the politicians. 
That's how um, uh, in Rand, um, Ayn Rand in in US uh, and her influence in um, American politics. It was very mm -hmm. devastating. So it's um, you know it's a very dangerous uh, path where politicians start like looking at each other. Can we can do that? We can mold so, society like that. So dangerous. But if you think that the quality is say not so good, do you think they're more likely to fail? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I think Russian reads is extremely picky. They are way pickier than here because here is uh, uh, literature is dominated by genre fiction. But in Russia, people are still kind of literature literature centric. They want quality. Are you planning to translate your book in Russian and have it published in Russian? <laughs> uh, well, some publishing houses they were, they were interested in it, but the thing is, it's written in a way uh, that. Um, new books introduced and, and at the same time uh, recent changes in the Russian society explained as well through the books. So I think everybody in Russia would know such things. I don't think it's that interesting. I mean, it's, I think it's still um, a good place for a book like that because there are not that many books. There is one book finally published about modern Russian literature. It's a, it's a, a kind of from a literary um, professors in, in the US. Uh, they are Russian. It's a 500 pages book. It's very expensive, so not everybody can pay uh, 50 pounds for a book. Obviously, libraries will buy it, but that's it's a very you know limited audience. And also, um, you know the terminology that's been used only specialists can understand. It. So uh, I think it needs to be more books there, uh, friendly to uh, uneducated readers as well. So. Um, you sort of completely didn't mention Andrei Kurkov. Where does he fit in that uh, oh. you know, in the context? Because he's Russian speaking but Ukrainian, um, and he's quite successful here. Like, yes. And so. uh, the only book I've read by him was in English. <laughs> yes. um, he writes in English, yeah, right? Yeah. No. Yeah, he does. <coughs> but he so uh, so I have put him in uh, uh, I mentioned in political fiction, but mostly in the crime section because although he's quite politicized, <coughs> I mentioned his recent book Ukrainian Diaries about the events that happened in the in Ukraine uh, war in Ukraine. Uh, but mostly he's famous for his uh, Death and Penguin and other um, uh, um, crime novels. So I think, yeah. Uh, overall, um, it's a still a genre fiction, though. I mean, it's a bit more intellectual than your average crime novel, but still. Yeah. Well, uh, it's uh, is it? It's 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 strange, but probably I don't know. Uh, uh, for me, uh, the best uh, 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 kind of science fiction was was Tugatsky, but they are not very well known here, are they? They are quite well known, actually, because uh, of the uh, screen adaptations. Uh, and yeah, of course. Yes, I mean, they, no, people no. Uh, people have seen the latest Solaris, although uh -huh. it was uh, American version of it. But and th this was by them, I think. Yeah, Solaris. So, ah, no, Solaris is them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes. And um, because ah. of that, but. Uh, Liam and Strugatsky often go together. Uh -huh. If you if you actually mention them, oh yes, but then Strugatsky and like, like this, they all always viewed as like an intellectual um, science fiction. So and uh, because of that, Stalker, Stalker, Stalker. they know Stalker, they know the uh, the roadside picnic as well, and uh, so. I think I think maybe it's easier to present intellectual science fiction by just kind of grouping several authors um, together. I don't know. It's uh, because otherwise people will end up reading mostly fantasy or other things uh, you know, there. Not that you can tell. Because a lot of philosophy, I mean, I've read a lot of uh, their books. Uh, they were so, uh, such um, like um, um, so certain technical details I was reading about enzymes they use in molecular biology in Strugatsky books, so uh -huh. that, that, which were written like in the 80s. So I think, um, I think it's not going to be accessible to uh, a lot of readers. So, um, yeah, so I think um, that's why maybe film adaptation is the one way to popularize them. But that's again, I mean, did mention Strugansky because it's a Soviet era uh -huh. um, and Russian literature. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> okay.